Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order this special meeting of the Board of Commissioners, 16 p.m. Joey, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Here. Commissioner Rollins? Here. Commissioner Bogelsang? Here. And Commissioner Here. Uh, I assume there's no changes to the agenda since we have a intended purpose for being here this evening. So at this time, I'll go ahead and open up the floor to public request. Uh, in the interest of uh, allowing everyone to have an opportunity to talk about our topic tonight, which is uh, the uh, public commentary on the Boca National Golf Course, I'd like to, if you would please confine your comments to three minutes, and uh, we'll be happy to hear any questions that you have regarding uh, plans for the golf course. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Wayne Brand's wife, who is with the Price Fazio architectural firm, the architect that we selected to uh, assist us in the endeavor of bringing back the, to life the Boca National Golf Course. Wayne? Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, we do apologize that it was a little bit at short notice, but it was important for us with us just having executed our agreement uh, with the district, it's, it was important for us before we started our work to actually get your input into the process. So, uh, so I think first of all, uh, my apologies that uh, Nick Price could not be here tonight. He's away traveling on his summer vacation. Um, however, I would like to introduce our team members that are, that are here tonight. Uh, we have Tom Fazio, um, from our design team, George Garcia from Garcia Stromberg, the Clubhouse Architect, uh, Charles Putman from Putman Associates, our land planner, and Carol Perez from uh, who is our landscaping, our landscape architect from AGT Land. Uh, thanks very much to all of you for joining us here tonight. So just to give you an, out, uh, an outline of, of where we are and where we intend to go. Um, we have signed all of our sub-consulting agreements. That's with the environmental uh, consultant, um, our engineer, our land planner, the golf course architect, clubhouse architect. And so all of those agreements are in place and we've already started the process of, of really the investigation. And I think this first phase is an investigation phase. So that uh, although we can design something now, we don't know that it can actually um, take place, depending on the, the, uh, the permits that are allowed or the regulations that are in place. So, so we're in that phase now, uh, and we expect that to take you know, probably a good month before we begin to understand all of the uh, implications that surround the property. Um, so unfortunately, I, I can't tell you what this project is going to cost tonight. I really, you know, we've, as I say, we've just started. We haven't done any, any significant work that I can report to you and say, this is what we know, because we really don't know anything at this point. Um, so, I appreciate you all coming here tonight. Um, we look forward to hearing what you have to say about what's important to you. And um, with that, I've opened, I guess, and uh, open to uh, if, uh, those that wish to uh, speak to this issue, we'll just, we don't, we're not taking cards, we're just going to get everybody at random. Uh, and I uh, hope you don't have to fight for the microphone here, but uh, just to be Kate up here, you might. Uh, but I appreciate, uh, if you would, to uh, try to keep your comments to uh, three minutes. Uh, uh, commissioners and uh, Wayne and his team will be taking notes on the comments that uh, you make this evening. And as uh, Wayne mentioned, we just recently, the, the contract that uh, we uh, signed with the Price Fazio team, I think that he is barely dry on that. We signed that uh, last week. And uh, so preliminary work is underway, but it's very preliminary. And, and the, uh, there's nothing that's been predetermined about what we plan to do with the golf course. Uh, or where it's in place uh, via the uh, burden structure as well. So the floor is now open. If you just come to the microphone, uh, give us your name and address for the record, and uh, you may approach the microphone here at your own convenience. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Fazio. I'm 
ask you a question. These comments just about the golf course or about the whole project? Uh, this is about the Boca National Golf Course and its uh, supporting structure. So if there's anything to do with the golf course, we're welcome to hear comments about that. Obviously, it will be a phase in project, most likely the effort to get the golf course open, vertical structures at some point to you know, come at that and maybe not operating a temporary uh, you know, a uh, supporting structure there for the golf course until we can get the, uh, the architecture work done for the clubhouse and, and the other issues. But uh, you may address any subject that you like dealing with the club. Hello, my name is uh, Robert Ducate. Uh, for the record, 5351 with West Third Terrace. Uh, I do live in Boca Tinka, and you might recall I was probably the first person to come up and uh, approach the uh, Beach and Park District about acquiring it. I want to thank you for your uh, cooperation and consideration. I was also very happy here last night's uh, meeting that uh, several of you mentioned that the economics of uh, the golf course would be uh, something that you'd be very interested in making your decision especially with regard to whether or not it's going to be a 27-hole championship layout or an 18-hole championship layout with other practice facilities. Very happy that you mentioned that because you had the answer a year ago with your feasibility study from the National Golf Foundation. This report uh, basically uh, has many references in here only to 27 holes the entire report. You have no other independent report that I'm aware of other than this report supporting the economics of 27 holes. Uh, I can go through page by page, but uh, for the sake of uh, brevity, you all have that. I can tell you that uh, on page 14, uh, they said the cost to construct a 27-hole regulation golf course uh, would be approximately $14.795 million. Uh, page 16 shows the uh, proposed layout, which is similar to the historical 27-hole championship layout. Uh, page 18 shows the uh, economic history of the current book in Raton Municipal Golf Course, which has an 18-hole championship layout and an executive course, which uh, is similar to what has been the alternate proposal in this process. Uh, that particular proposal uh, the, uh, uh, has had a very poor economic history with the city of Boca Raton, averaging $285,000 loss a year for fiscal year 2014 to 16. Uh, again, page 25 starts with uh, the summary with the new 27 hole mid to upper market public golf course in a prime location. And uh, page 55 shows the cash flow statement for a 27 hole Boca National Golf Club, which starts at 258,000 net operating income in year one and increases to over $500,000 in years four and five. So uh, the most financially successful public golf course we know in this area is Osprey. Osprey Point is operated by the county. Uh, Paul Canal is the person I've been contacted with uh, several times over the last year. And uh, he just gave me a 13 page report if you're interested and what the finances have been for all the golf courses in Palm Beach County. And uh, Osprey has had $1 million to $2 million net operating profit ever since uh, the last five years, and it's been profitable ever since it's been open. Uh, and, uh, so again, the, uh, the economics clearly indicate 27 holes. There are other ways to enhance the character of the golf course, and uh, I'll be going to 20th to talk about that. Thank you. Okay. I think if you just get that to Brianne and uh, Robert, we'll, everybody will talk to you about it. Okay. I'm Harold Chaffee, 6200 Local Second in Boca Tica. I'm the president of Keep Golf in Boca. Happy for uh, we've, been, we've been discussing this for almost two and a half years from its infancy, uh, basic just to say green space, the basic now where we're going to have another golf course. Uh, we've always wanted the 27 hole golf course for many reasons. The the community, I think, needs it, and the reason why is because our my conception was basically that we need something in the city, basically here at the golf course, that we can can handle youth teams, uh, competition, uh, corporations, FAU, 
uh, Lynn University, all the golf clubs, all the golf teams, or uh, basically clubs at the mall. If you have an 18 hole golf course, you know, basically you, you're going to have to shut one of them down. They're going to basically do this to do either a fundraise or something else that basically that, 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 that these, these clubs or teams need. And, uh, and, and also you need to shut down one course base for the refurbish. Uh, 27 basically, is, is, I think, is the way to go. Um, you have, you, you want to do an executive course, but you have an executive course. That executive course basically is Red Reef, a beautiful place. Loses $350,000 a year. So you're going to build another executive course over in Boca Tica. And what are you going to do with Red Reef? You know, it, it's duplication of effort. Most of the people I talk to, and I, I, I have, um, there's like 1,500 people, or 1,500 condos, there's probably 3,000 people, and email, I try to send them out, but with a short notice like this, it was very difficult. You know, we can only send out like 450 uh, you know, emails at a time, so it's, it's, it's tough. But most of, the, most of the emails I get back basically are praising you as far as taking on this, this uh, awesome responsibility of doing this golf course, and also saving the green space and saving the, the golf course in our area. But almost all the responses basically, and there's multiple, you know, I could read a lot of them to you, but most of them also state that the 27 hole would be the best situation for our area, and also for golfers to play more rounds of golf. There's more, you can get 40% more rounds of golf with the, with the 27 holes than you can with 18. And the reason why we're doing this is to play golf. That's it. So I'm going to thank you very much for everything you've done. My name is Tony Dodino. I live at 6200 Northwest 2nd Avenue at Boca Tica. I live right behind the East Course. And as I had mentioned at a couple of meetings, that we were, you know, you hear the rumors. We always hear rumors. 18, is it going to be 18? Is it going to be 27? I both played there and, I, and worked there at, at Ocean Breeze. And I can tell you, it's, it's a great layout. 27 holes with a great layout. Five different teams, yet yeah, it took care of everybody's skill levels for both male and female. So I'd love to see it stay the way it was. I used to get a lot of compliments when people walked into my apartment and I was on the ground floor and I used to just look out the back and it was the first green for the East Course. And now I'm here at Rooms and they put the driving range on that side. And just don't want it. I, uh, I brought something with me today that I got from one of the original owners at Boca Tica when it first opened in the 70s. As you all know, a lot of years ago, except maybe the Red Sox fans, the Yankees used to train at Fort Lauderdale. And we even have in my building, Thurman Munson's family still owns a unit there. And they used to have a benefit golf tournament every year at Boca Tica. And they used to raise money for Boca High School. And they gave me one of the pictures. This is a picture of Joe DiMaggio playing at Boca Tica. We just don't know what hole he was on, but we can see all kind of in the back. So my biggest thing is, guys, I, I, you know, thank you for wanting to fix it up and everything like that, but please, please leave it as a 27 hole golf course. We appreciate it. Thank you. So, so very, I live at 6200 Northwest 2nd Avenue, 315, Boca Tica. Um, basically, I'm here to talk to the, the designers and the architects of what's going to be. I'm sure they're very familiar with all kinds of uh, city codes and following the city codes. I also want 20. I also, excuse me, I also want 27 holes. Not a, not exactly for all the same reasons um, as the other gentleman that spoke here, but um, I got to tell you, there's, there's in, in Boca Raton, there's what's called CAB. CAB is the Community Appearance Board. In the Community Appearance Board on page 1928 has a whole page of designated designation of uh, specimen for trees and historic trees, and if anyone plans on making the, the driving range and moving it, obstructing and moving tons and yardages of dirt and everything like that. There's a whole set of rules and regulations and they kind of trump the city code. They have their own code. 
You can't get signed off until the cab signs off. So when you design everything, I want you to keep in mind that you know, anyone that's really disrupted with a whole new course of where you're gonna put this here, put that there, and we think the driving range should go here, and we're gonna move this earth and take these trees down, there's, there's not only gonna be um, the cab people that are gonna be interested, there's gonna be a whole lot of people that are gonna be calling cab or going to cab. I want you to keep that in mind when you design something as far as, you know, I am a tree hugger, and when you start removing trees and moving earth, I know it has to be done to redesign, but at a minimum, and that's what I'm looking for with the 27 holes. Thank you. Adam Islamic, 6661 Northwest 2nd. I'm the president of Boca Tiga 6 Condo Association, but I want to stress I'm presenting only my personal views today. As a Boca Tiga resident, I'm very thankful for the decision to buy the golf course. As a city of Boca resident, I'm dismayed by the costs of buying the golf course. However, I think that it was a prudent decision to keep green spaces in Boca, as I think there is too much development and is affecting the quality of life for current residents. As I hope many of you know, golf is a dying sport in America. What we need now are decisions that will allow for the successful operation of the golf course moving forward. I keep reading about bringing championship golf to Boca. Can this be accomplished by having a 27 hole mostly par three course? I think the key to ch championship golf would be accomplished by having an 18 hole golf course. Also, please consider a professional mini golf course like there used to be on Airport Road. At Greg Norman Golf Academy, sounds awesome. If the success of this project requires revenue from building a four-star hotel rather than another community center, then let's build the hotel. Expanding Northwest 2nd for additional lanes where possible, I think this already needs to be done. And once the golf course is open for business, let's look at special event examples from other courses across the country to drive interest in revenue, such as nighttime golf, 15-inch holes, and foot golf, a combination of soccer and golf. I have one final suggestion for the entire project. Include a fitness trail around the perimeter of the golf course that can be utilized at any time. This trail can be utilized by runners and fitness enthusiasts alike, and include fitness equipment. In close, maximizing the revenue of this project should be important in order to retain this green space and to improve the wellness of residents now and in the decades to come. Thank you. My name is Peggy Hout. I live at 293 Northwest 64th Street in Bogotica. What I would like to address is something a little bit different. Um, I would like to address the entrance to Boca National. Uh, I, I would like to recommend that since we are starting with a blank slate, that possibly we utilize the Clintmore Corridor as our main entrance. Uh, if we take down the, the bushes and the chain link fences that are overgrown, and destroyed as you come down over the bridge. It gives you room to put in new monument signs, possibly a water feature. Uh, with all the new uh, buildings that may go up, if we give them a clipboard address, uh, we, we could divert traffic from going through the residential portion of 2nd Avenue and uh, use the four-lane thoroughfare that's already there. Also, it's an appearance issue coming through Yamato Road. You have different condominium associations with different landscaping. It would give you a more unified look if you could come in and see symmetry and uh, landscaping that befits what you're trying to accomplish. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Joel Bowie at 700 Elm Tree Lane. I think I'm the first one that's not a Boca Tica resident. I live in Southeast Boca. 
Uh, and I am part of the Boca Golf Association, and Greg Galanis, our chairman, is in Cape Cod enjoying that, but they're up there. So I'll speak. Our, we've, we're the players at Boca Municipal. Uh, the men's league, the women's league, and there's about, Greg says there are 1,500 of us, and we're, we're all golfers, and we're the ones that support the current municipal course. We, our members have met uh, numerous times, and uh, our, our uh, preference is 18 championship holes and a good executive course, a learning area, and a driving range. I've heard the talk about 27 holes. I love Osprey Point. It's a beautiful facility. It's on well over twice the acreage that uh, Ocean Breeze is. I, I don't think you can fit 27 holes, a full length driving range, a learning center uh, on, uh, on Ocean Breeze. The other problem, and I'm, I'm listening to this, and I'm certainly sympathetic with, with the Boca Tica's concern about their own values. I, I can, I'm so sympathetic to that. But we've got a golf course that failed. I mean, it's closed. It's, it's not working. And all these, there are many condominium courses in the state. I was a, I was a developer. Uh, these courses were developed based on recreation fees for the condos. I think that was a 30-year deal when the recreation fees ceased. The golf courses failed, and there's dozens of failed condo golf courses in the uh, in the state. So we really need to do something different. We can't just repeat the, the mistake that we have and end up with, a, with something that's not going to work again. I know that uh, you know we. I know our architects are very experienced, very good. They know what to do, and I'm sure they're going to come up with a great plan. And I also want to thank the board and the the district for your efforts and it's much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Doug Collar from uh, 5701 Northwest 2nd Avenue. Um, and uh, I think that, that uh, everybody in Boca Tica is, uh, which I'm from also, uh, you know, they want to see the, you know, the course be successful too. And, um, you know, I've lived there for almost uh, 20 years, and probably for the time that I've lived there, the course really never was, was up to speed. And there's a lot of issues behind that. Um, there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, problems between the homeowners and the and the, the current ownership, I think that with it being a public course now, um, you know, the, the, the chances of success and the chances of a relationship being much more uh, conducive to making a, a success. So, you know, I don't look at the 27 holes as the reason that, that it really failed, you know. I mean, it was, it was undercapitalized, uh, you know, there was a lack of direction from the people who were trying to run it. Um, and just, uh, you know, a lot of issues of them having obligations to the community that, you know, the community was, was, was putting money into the, into the course, but um, it was also uh, really an obligation that, that they had to provide services to the community. So, uh, you know, the dynamics have, have significantly changed and will change because uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a public course. The obligations between the community are not, you know, aren't contractual. Um, you know, it's it's uh, just a whole different situation. Um, so, when it when it comes down to the economics, the people in Boca Tica want this thing to work. Um, but, you know, sincerely feel that, that 27 holes could work there, and that the 27 holes uh, is something that is more compatible with the community as a whole. Um, a couple of other issues, uh, lay the address of traffic and the entrance, um, you know, it's a great idea. I think that, that one thing that, you know, as you go through the process that, uh, you know, as opposed to opening up Second Avenue and widening those roads and things, that, that really the, the, uh, the 
solution is you know traffic calming efforts and things like that, as opposed to uh, trying to push more traffic through through the community. I think it's it's beneficial to the to the customers and to the people that are going to come use the golf course. Um, you know, and if you look at the way that it's presently laid out, as far as where the parking lots are, you know, it's probably going to suffer the the um, Effects of trying to take left-hand turns and stuff to go north, and I'm sure you're aware of these things. But uh, you know, I think traffic calming could go a long ways towards solving some of those issues. Thank you. Sounds like the the plans for our new golf course should be to refurbish Brian and Greece's interest in their property values. Um, you guys had your chance. You didn't use the golf course enough. You didn't fund it enough. You sold it, and then you didn't support the new course. So golf over there is you know Brian and Greece is a I mean, uh, Okatiga doesn't seem to be a mecca of, of golf enthusiasts, such that we need to shape our objectives to their design. This is a community course. It just happens to be near Bocatica because they, you know, it's gone abandoned and couldn't sustain itself. And now we have it, and we have an obligation to serve the entire beach district taxpayers and the city taxpayers. This is taxpayers' golf, golf course. It's our golf course. Um, maybe 27 holes is, is the answer. Um, I don't think that the, the economics of the golf course needs to be the prime concern. We want, to, we want it to make money. We want it to sustain itself. We don't want to have it be a, a, a deep money hole. I don't think it will. But other projects in the, in the district, in the city, you know, they don't, they don't break even. I mean, how many books do you have to rent to keep the library, uh, you know, making a profit? Or playing soccer at Sugar Sands or wherever. Um, we know that the city's there to, um, to help when uh, money's needed to have wonderful amenities, which we do for our, our citizens. So, you know, long story short, we strongly favor 18 great holes, a great practice facility, perhaps a learning center, and a, a good driving range, where people can go just to go to the driving range, get lessons, hot, chip, learn the game. When I'm playing out there at, at uh, Boca Muni, there's a couple of holes that go right by the um, uh, executive course, and I, I take the time to look and see what's going on there. We see young kids. We see you know, struggling people who are trying to learn the game. We see older people who only want to spend a couple hours out there. The whole range of people that should be on an executive course until they can graduate to the big course. And that provides them with that uh, the opportunity. So, Anyway, I think it would serve the community, the taxpayers as a whole, to have that type of arrangement. You know, like comparing Osprey, Osprey is extremely unique. There's nothing else like it in this county. You can't get a tea time there even in the summer, practically. It's hard. That's because it's, it's well played. People want to go play there. It's unique. You know, they have a huge learning center. You know, the FAU kids are out there practicing. You know, it's, they have the, the learning center and it's law or whatever. Big, huge, we can't do that. We don't have enough land. Unless we can somehow make this a two-story golf course. So, uh, anyway, that's what I, what I feel. And I hope that's what we build. Anybody else that would like to speak, uh, if, if there's others, come on, sir. Uh, you know, just 
please line up there and then make it go a little bit faster for you. And uh, remind you there's a we're being time for three minutes and uh, you have an hour, you have an hour before, sir. Very good. My name is Clarence Smith, 256 Northwest 64th Street, Bocatica, and more specifically on the ninth tee of the North Course. Uh, <clears throat> We, my wife and I moved here about 24 years ago, and shortly thereafter, we, I, got involved with the golf course committee, working for Mickey Gomez, uh, for the course out there. And at that time, uh, we came up with some ideas, and at the golf course out of Wade's Road, you couldn't use credit cards. Let's go to credit cards. No. Cost money at credit cards. And so <clears throat> we had some interesting discussions and so forth. One of the things I think I would like to recommend <clears throat> you want 27 holes? No, I want 18. 27, 18. <clears throat> I think we got people here like Price and Fazio. I think they've been around the block once or twice. They know a little bit about golf. And I might pursue, I really want this, but in their professional opinion, they say, I think this is your best solution, based upon all those experiences. And I think we all should listen to them. I mean, obviously, we're hiring them. But we need to listen to people, and because we could very well get 80 different opinions here tonight and you take a vote, okay, 43 for this and 34 for this. Is that the right one? No. Let's turn it over to the FASMO group and make sure that we do things right according to their professional opinion. Say to walk straight up yes. there. No, no. I, I apologize. I just walked in, so I probably missed a, a ton of stuff, and I'm going to repeat myself. My name is Fred O'Mannon. I, I live uh, in Boca Tica. I have a unit overlooking the sixth hole on the north course. And uh, if asked, what would I like? Human nature? Everything. Return it back to its former glory. Wouldn't that be great? The jewel of Boca, which was the place to be. I hear the stories, New York Yankees coming down, staying at the inn, playing at the course. All great stuff. What do we really need? I guess we need something there that's sustainable for both the city, most importantly, and I would think taxpayers. I'm not, I, I, I'm a taxpayer, but I'm a Canadian actually, and I live here seasonally, just happen to be down right now. But I, I guess my point was when I, when I saw this come up, could have picked a better time, rush hour, one, one day notice, found out of it this morning. But I have no transparency as to what is the budget? What are we talking about here? I mean, it would be nice to have the rec center, first class restaurant, items that I would think might help make it a sustainable entity in that golf courses down here in southern Florida, dime a dozen hard to make them self-sustaining. That's got to be one of the motivations. 18, 27, what is the budget? What is feasible in that budget? If what the community wants goes beyond that, and yeah, it would be great to have the rec center. Things we had before, why not bring it back? Make it the jewel. You're going to do something? Do it right from the start. But how do you do that when I attended just the second meeting? First meeting was the city. They said, hey, you're not getting any money from us. I say to myself, how the heck did you ever allow Parks and Rec to buy the course in the first place and then say, hey, we're not funding you anymore. Tough. Well, what do you do at this point? In my mind, I've always thought from day one when I heard about this, and I've been down, heard about the previous development that, was, that had occurred and made its way through. I think it, in 05, 06, there was a developer that came down. Plans were submitted to the city. It seemed like Boca Tica was quite happy with what was proposed at the time. 
maybe that should be a consideration rather than eight, you know, 27 holes and build this for us and build that for us, where I don't know where the money's coming from. Maybe development should be brought into the picture, at least considered. And again, as an outsider, this can is, is, is really dead. It's been kicked down the road so many bloody times now over the years that if in fact funding is a requirement, why not start at least considering uh, partnering with a developer at some point, sooner rather than later, because, geez, it would be nice to have a course rather than have a, a you know, a field out there, a, a grass, you know, grassy knolls, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so just maybe think outside of the box and rather than what we want, what can we afford, and if we can't afford it, what can we do to get there? And maybe revisiting the previous development plan, which I, I don't per se have great details on, but I heard all of Bogotica finally, finally, it took a while, did approve it, did like the amenities were being offered, and uh, I guess it was 18 plus an executive, I don't remember the details. Anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Rick Hurd. I'm at 285 Northeast Spanish Court. And I thank the uh, Parks District for the opportunity to have this meeting for everyone to provide input. Uh, my partners, Diana Law and Don Law, and I are part of the law, whatever, that is at Osprey Point. Um, so we run the Teaching Academy and the Pro Shop merchandise at Osprey Point. And we also ran the Teaching Academy at Ocean Breeze for seven years until the golf course closed. So we have a lot of experience in the Ocean Breeze environment, um, having seen the course pretty much at its heyday all the way through to the end. And we have tremendous experience at Osprey Point running the academy. And I think mainly uh, I'd like to congratulate the Price Fazio group and welcome them and offer our services, our input um, at any time to assist in the process. And as the former speaker said, I think it's, um, while we all may have our opinions about 27 holes or 18 holes or whatever, I think um, we should trust in your judgment and your expertise as the designers. Um, our desire, I think, is, and my desire as a resident is to have a fantastic golf facility that can be self-sustaining and be an exemplary um, facility for the city. Whether that's 27 or 18, I think um, the time will tell and the design will dictate that. Thank you.
do you have comments? So we certainly have a website where you can send in your emails, but we appreciate you taking the time out to come here this evening and, and to speak to us about, about the project. It's important to us is it, to have community input. Uh, I think we've had some good uh, ideas to put forth this evening. Uh, some interesting uh, things to follow up on uh, that I think uh, will be a benefit in the design process. And uh, if there's no one else that wishes to come forward, I'll keep the mic open for a few more minutes. Would you like to come forward now? Just a quick question. Yes. So are we proceeding with the parking lots in, uh, I read, in two months or something like that, that they're going to start um, taking out the parking lots? And, and well, as, far, as far as the demolition to the course, which you're referring to, uh, we, we do have, um, we're, we're looking at uh, trying to obtain permits right now to remove the structures that are on there that are in disrepair. Um, there's been a, an asbestos survey done of the building, so we have to uh, have a, a specialist to do the debris removal because the debris has to be treated properly in the process. Uh, and as to what, how long that will be, I, I don't know, have an exact uh, timeline. It has been mentioned recently, but I know it's, we've had, we're in for permits, is that right, Mark? Uh, so, we were thinking probably a month or so before we, the permits were done. And once that happens, then we'll begin removing the, the structures, the, the hotel, the clubhouse. Uh, as far as the, the parking lot, you referred to one by the clubhouse and then across the street at the uh, tennis facility that was there. Uh, I, I think uh, probably those are going to have to be uh, removed uh, in, in the process when we start doing the architectural work. But as to the timeline, I, I, I couldn't tell you on that exactly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, you, you raise an interesting point, uh, and that, that issue has been brought up to us before about uh, it's contiguous to our property and certainly would be a nice add-on. And as you, uh, if you were at the meeting we had with the city council, we talked about uh, the city uh, uh, <coughs> dedicating the extension of that road to the beach and parks district so we would have, have that rounded off. Uh, I, I know that the home is for sale. Uh, I know what the sale price is. We have, uh, we are, I, we did uh, engage uh, an appraiser to uh, give us an appraisal on the property. I have not seen that uh, at this point. And to answer your question, I don't know who would buy it, uh, uh, the property other than you know the new neighbor. So uh, we'll see where that goes. No, no, no promises there. Do you, do you have plans of putting uh, a clubhouse with a restaurant in it? We, we haven't gotten that far yet. We have talked about that concept, uh, about having a facility that uh, the community could use for special events. Uh, with our, uh, our architect, uh, we haven't gone into any great details on, on that. We're, we're gonna look for something, you know, economics is, is important to me. I don't wanna have to raise our uh, tax dollars in order to uh, fund the golf course. Uh, we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to run the golf course at a profit, that's our plan and whatever supporting facilities are necessary to accomplish that. Uh, we're not relying on our architect, and I know they have a team that's working on several different options, uh, and they'll give us a performance, uh, a performance on what options are available, and we'll try to look at ones that uh, does the best for the community. We're not, we're not looking to get rich off of the project, uh, but we are looking to cover our expenses and help reduce the debt uh, service on that as we go forward with the development of the vertical structures also. Will there be a point in time where we see some renderings when you finally make the final decision and what you're actually going to do there? Uh, absolutely. I mean, before, before we make the decision, we'll, we'll you know, as we move forward this, in this next four to six week process, we, we need to gather the information. And as we gather the information, we need to understand what we can do and what we can't do. That needs to conceptual designs. And then that's the next phase is to present those concepts and, and, all of the, uh, and all of the work behind that so that people understand or that we can present to you the fact that this works, this, does, this is why it works, this is why this doesn't work. So I think it will be a, a detailed presentation of that. Yeah, we agree with the city that we would have at least three public hearings on the project so that. Uh, 
as the information is developed, we can bring that to you, as Wayne said, you know, the conceptual uh, concepts. And then, you know, after our next book, once we show those, then we may have another meeting to have, uh, you know, refinement of those conceptual concepts. So we're not locked into just three meetings. We're going to do whatever it takes in order to satisfy the public that we've vetted this properly and we're doing the very best we can to put forth a project that uh, the community uh, of the Beach Park District and the City of Upper Tone will be proud to have uh, in, in their inventory. Yes, sir. Uh, are the tax course going to be completely removed or you guys? I, I suspect that's going to be the case, but uh, as I said, we're in the very beginning of this process, so we really don't have too much information, but uh, I, <clears throat> if, if the tennis courts are removed and uh, they've been there since I've been in town, I'm going to be very first, <clears throat> and that's since 1977. So I think that whether they are, are being removed or kept there, they'll probably have to be replaced with a, a newer product. But uh, as I said, we're, we're so new to this uh, project that uh, you know our, our consultant hasn't really come up with uh, any more specific details. So I'll take take one more question and then. Uh, and let, if you want to come up to the microphone, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, the lady up there had her hand up. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, go back to one comment that I heard that there are golf courses all over the state of Florida from those condominiums that were built 30 or 40 years ago. It's interesting that we have this opportunity to develop a product that maybe is new, something interesting that other communities around the state might be interested in inviting their communities. This is a revival I think, for, uh, for this community. Uh, I, I think the idea of our whole environmental picture changing in this whole particular is an old community. There's an amazing uh, outstanding, so to speak, I've been in 25 years. But um, it's an opportunity. Whatever looks good, exciting, uh, should be something we're all interested in. How does it change? How does golf change over the last 30 or 40 years? Who are we trying to attract? And, uh, you know, what, what can bring more vitality to the community? It's not all the time. Obviously, work uh, people are feeling bold and to come and speak. Uh, and uh, I do want to open the floor if uh, someone wants to come and uh, We'd like to have your name and address uh, for the record to capture your comments. We are uh, videoing this meeting, so if you want to go to our website, you'll be able to uh, go through the, the comments that have been made this evening. Uh, and I, I, if, if you have any further questions uh, and you have some comments, I'd love for you to come to the microphone. And uh, young lady, would you like to come up here? Okay. Um, I'm going to step back because I, I want this to be as free flowing as possible, but I want to sure that everybody has an opportunity to get your questions answered. Um, I may not be able to answer your questions, but rather hear your comments. I think that's the whole purpose of this evening is to pass along comments so we are uh, consulting. Yes, ma'am. Deborah Miller, 5340 Northwest 2nd Avenue in Boca Tica. Um, I think one of the questions I have is you're talking about, you know, your, the discussion now is how, how do we want to visualize the golf course, 1827? One of my questions is, because we're on two, um, two sides of the street, you know, what would happen, you know, should you go to 18 holes and keep it on the west side of the street, what, what is the vision for the east side of the street? Um, will it become something else, like a park or something else? I think that's a major concern for us that are on the, uh, on the east side. Um, whether we're now gonna be an open park, you know, a dog park is what we are now, and a dump, <laughs> you know, so I think, <laughs> right? <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Flanders. I'm at uh, <clears throat> 52, uh, uh, 87, uh, Katika. Um, I've had some experience historically uh, within the golfing industry and uh, seeing these types of situations evolve. Um, as the lady over there said, the opportunity is an exciting one from the standpoint of this could be a model for a leadership situation for future developments of a similar nature. Um, 
the first and fundamental situation is that it has to be a, a product that works financially. Um, it cannot be a supportive product from the standpoint of relying on the tax base of uh, support from the town or the city. Um, secondly, the mix is primarily the key factor. Um, the idea of 27 or 18 holes, um, from my standpoint, I would look at an 18 hole on the west side with a mix of a pitch and putt, which is a fundamental part of the learning process of golf, tied in with a driving range. And uh, you could have other a putting, a putting greens as well. Um, there is enough space, I believe, on the east side of the road uh, where that current uh, situation is located. Um, one of the other key things in this type of development, particularly moving forward, are the environmental constraints, which I'm sure the consultant knows about, of capturing grey water. Um, there are so many features now that are available, and if you go to any of the golf shows, you'll hear about how they, the irrigation systems actually <coughs> minimise the amount of excess water that's required. It, it, the capture ponds, um, uh, even down to microscopic monitoring of the pipeline when there's a drop in pressure of pipelines for the irrigation system, warning signs go on, so you're never depleting the water within the community. You're not having to go outside the community. All of these uh, measures go towards making the operation more self-sufficient and efficient. So you know, just some ideas, and I'd, I'd like to get your card and talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Fred Tarcio, 5340, Pocatica. I've been playing golf there for 35 years. That golf course always made money. They were doing 250, 300 rounds a day. The guy that bought it, that wanted to develop it, was swindling money. That's why the course failed. That course can make money. They always had a lot of tournaments there. We had groups there. We had five different groups. We were called the Pin Seekers. And we played there six days a week. And we had a starting time every day at 12 o'clock. And that's a big blue collar group of people that came there to play golf. And I think it should stay 27 holes. You've got plenty of room with the old ranges to take out that putting green and you can almost go back to the street. You'll gain another 50, 60 yards there and you can hit balls there and you won't hit the houses. And before they used to have a net up there so they wouldn't hit the houses in the back. There's two houses right in the back of the old driving range. There's a lot of things that could be done there, but 27 old, when you're doing 200, 300 rounds of golf a day, you're going to have backup with 18 holes. Nobody's going to be able to move and nobody's going to play. You're going to have a five hour round of golf. With 27, they used to split them up. So everybody would go around and it was never a hold up. Three hours, three and a half hours you play. It'd be a shame if they, they don't keep the 27. <laughs> Yes, with respect to what I said earlier, is the intent to try and, like, Pocatica had a concept in the first place. We had the inn, we had the tennis, we had the, the driving range, we had the putting green, we had the uh, recreational facilities. Everything was there as a concept with the restaurant. And that's what pulled everybody in and made it a very popular place. Is the intent to try and keep that and resurrect that? Or are we, is the city basically, we want a golf course, be it 18, uh, 27 with uh, you know some uh, putting and uh, driving range. Which direction are we going? Are we, are we trying to give something back to Pocatica, or is it basically let's get a let, let's get the golf course up and running? Uh, there's a difference there. Our evidence is to give something back to the local town community, which includes the Greater Oak Town Beach Parks District, without impinging on the neighborhood. And anything we do is going to enhance the neighborhood. As far as what the ultimate uh, design is going to be. 
if we just don't have any ideas I mentioned before, we're, we're open to uh, ideas from our uh, golf course architect that you said, and, and they'll be the ones that we can pay attention to as far as what's, what's functional over there. Is the funding there to try and do something with what we once had to try and bring that back? I, I have no, I, I don't know whether it will be what you once had uh, there, but uh, we, we will do our best to make it something that will be a, an asset to the Tiga community as well as the community as a whole. Thank you. Yes, Fred, just tell the record who you are one more time. Oh, Fred Roman. Thank you. You were just doing a lot of Thank you. This, this was done in 2007. 27 whole golf clubs, which is completely laid out. Both typographical drawings, everything is available. This was done in 2007 to revamp this golf course. It was actually 27 whole golf clubs. If you look at it, they did just what the gentleman said. They took away the putting green, the elongated, the driving range, they moved things around. This, this is a, it's a beautiful thing. Harold Chapman. Harold, just restate the record that you are still Harold Chapman. Harold Chapman. Just one more thing. Back in the day, when Boca Tica owned the golf course and ran the golf course, they used to take 25, I think it was 25 or 30 bucks out of the condo fees that went towards the golf course every month. There's another idea that's something you can offer the condo pe condominium people where they become a social member. And your name again, sir? Fred Tachi. Fred Tachi. Thank you. This is another idea. Good afternoon. Keith Lehman, 6300 North of Second Avenue. Really appreciate all the good work that you guys have done toward this goal. Very worthwhile. I've seen quite a few designs, especially when we were doing the uh, proposals. And almost every one of them, all they really did was switch hole number one with hole number nine. Uh, they really haven't done any improvements to the course in all the designs that I've seen. So my question is, why are we looking to redesign? 27 holes, it's a, it's a model that works. Osprey Point has proven it. They got 96,000 rounds a year, I believe. And the 18 hole golf course has got 55,000 rounds. That's South London, Spoken Union, et cetera. So that's an awful lot of revenue to make out of different avenues. Another question that I have on why is why the drive is the revenue positive? The beaches, the soccer fields, none of the other beach and parks things turn a profit in any way, do they? So this is just supposed to be for the, the people of Boca Raton. I understand the drives make it national and try to attract them. Outside people can come in as well, but it's really just for us. And as far as the 27 holes goes, it doesn't need a redesign. I've played a lot of rounds of uh, golf here, and I've never heard of anybody complain about the track in any way. Except, and you can probably see them from around the room, those yellow spots, like the uh, large sand bunkers or the waste areas. I think everybody would like to see those rooms. But outside of that, it's a great track. It does need resurfacing. And that does present an opportunity to make it a little bit more playable. Wider greens, smaller sand traps, a little bit easier course. But uh, overall, it's a great track. I'd like to see you guys keep it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for listening. Sir. Hi, Jeff Sheldon, 6300 North of Second Avenue. This is the kind of feedback that we were hoping we would receive when, uh, when we got into this venture. Um, as I said, we don't know uh, where this is going to go, 27, 18. Um, I know there's a discussion about the, the cost to run the course. Um, I, I think the, uh, the profitability of the course, uh, at least to me, is important because I'm, I'm the one that has to face my neighbors when we start talking about my other more revenue. And uh, I don't want to to do anything that's going to increase that. I mean, in the public uh, sector, you know, your taxes pay for things uh, so your kids can recreate on rectangular fields and diamond fields, and and uh, we do charge uh, revenue for our tennis facility and, and the golf facility. We're gonna look at the economics of it, and I think that uh, it still will be a, a determining factor for me. Uh, do we wanna make a million two off of this uh, every year? 
I mean, that would be marvelous if we could do that. So do we have any idea that that will happen? We don't have any idea. But we do know that uh, we're going to put something out there at the entrance way to uh, the, the course. We're, it's going to be a major improvement. I, I come down Clinton Moore every evening to, from my office, and I see the uh, unsightly fence with the debris overgrown. I'm looking forward to seeing some monuments there. Somebody mentioned a, a fountain area there. I mean, it can be a real beautiful project that laid out to nicely. We have the architectural firm that we have confidence in is going to do that, that, that job for us. Uh, and I think it'll be one that you'll be proud of. As far as the, uh, the layout, of course, and, and the redesign, uh, you know, there's a lot of functionality on the course. I've played the course before and enjoyed it. I did enjoy the waste bunkers that somebody mentioned. Uh, and uh, I've seen my ball seems to be attracted to water uh, more often than I. Uh, but I think it's, uh, you know, we're going to make every effort to take in uh, consideration the comments that have been made this evening. Our architectural firm is here to, uh, to listen to these comments. And uh, all we can do is to promise you our best effort best product as possible. If you look around at the facilities that this the district has provided the community, I think you can see if we back up what we say. We produce uh, quality uh, facilities for our, our community, and we want to continue to do that. I want to thank everybody for coming here this evening. Remind you that August the 20th at 6 p.m. we'll reconvene this, so it should be plenty of notice for everybody. Uh, we do uh, want your input, Mr. K. If you get that uh, that uh, survey that you of the golf courses, uh, we would like to have that. And uh, we all we all have uh, started out with a the National Golf Foundation assessment of the feasibility of this course, and we'll be reviewing that again with our consultants. So, on behalf of the commissioners and the board of Beach and Park District, thank you very much for your feedback this evening, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.